welcome to KennyRoy.com. I'm Kenny Roy. This is the lecture for the month of August 2013, and it is the follow-up to the Polish Workflow lecture of last month, uh, Polish Workflow Part 3. And uh, I hope you are excited for this to see the uh, very, very last polish on a shot, an animated shot sent in by one of your fellow members. And uh, we're going to get started in just a second. But what I wanted to just kind of go over is the, uh, is the, is the workflow itself. I have gotten some feedback ever since I asked uh, a few weeks ago for some general feedback on the site. I've been talking to some people. I've also been talking to people who are not members of the site, um, uh, in particular some of my collaborators who said that um, at their school the, there was a lot of technical instruction. There was a lot of creative instruction. There was even some uh, blending of Maya technique with the creative instruction, but what it seems like across the board, what is lacking in all these institutions is just that connection of the, the, the moment where you decide what you want to do and how you actually go about doing it. So I try to be like Mr. Workflow, and I hope that that comes off, and I hope that you get what I'm trying to give you, okay? If, um, if, if anything, I'm trying to be the, 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 the guy that fills the gaps for you um, whenever you have an issue in the animation. I want to be doing more of it, though. I want to be the... Um, I want to be uh, sort of preempting all of the problems that you have. I want to be nipping them in the bud before they even are issues. And uh, to the people who are maybe new on the site, or if you uh, have been, uh, if you've gone to a university, you still have friends in the university. Um, all the people who to, uh, who have not been exposed to all of my content, um, I just. Uh, implore you to go and check out a few of the previews for the back uh, lectures and the back video mails. Okay, they're all, they're all, uh, the previews for all of these are um, in the store. And you can either um, purchase a digital download and, or you can actually do a pay-per-view uh, uh, purchase, which is less than the download and you can view it as many times as you want for 24 hours. Okay, so um, whichever, one, whichever one you do is up to you. But the reason I'm saying this is because there is a ton of workflow lectures uh, that um, really w what I've tried to do and what I'm, what I'm going to do, you know, continue on here is to be that connection, be that, that hopefully that, that final connection between an idea and how you literally go about doing it um, on your on, in your animated scene, because it's all it's fine all fine and good to just say hey you know you have to get squash and stretch in there, and that's sort of like the the creative instruction, and it's all well and good to say like you need to polish your arcs and that's sort of like a little bit more of the technical instruction, but when you have a uh, an idea for what you want to get on screen, how to get there, that is uh, what seems to be lacking. And so that's what I'm really going to try to focus on. All this is just to say that if you want more, especially workflow instruction, then what you need to do is you need to help me out. You need to tell me what are the issues that you're having? What are the things that you're trying to accomplish that are not just, they just feel like they're not coming together for you? And maybe it actually is a workflow issue. And maybe I can help you with that. What do you guys think of the new lighting? I'm trying this out. I'm not sure if I'm gonna stick with it like this, but I just, I just thought I'd mix it up today. Normally I have the two right here. Now I've got a little bit of like hatchet lighting, right? Or actually I guess this is just like a fill. But um, anyway. I don't know, I'm trying to keep things a little bit exciting here. Just to keep it exciting. Um, so I got everything I need. Got my Wacom, I got my water. Okay, that's part of workflow. You gotta be set up to work before you start working. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone's ever told you that before, but you have to have a workspace. So, let's take a quick sip. It's delicious, okay. 
and let's uh, let's get to work. Here we go. Okay, so if you remember, this is the scene that we've been uh, working on. It is a shot of groggy, shot, uh, no pun intended, um, being shot basically in the head, and he goes through this like death scene. Okay, now playing it at speed. What I try to do, and this is always my goal, is to try to make it so that I'm making a unique timing choice as as early as possible and that's what I talked about animating with tempo so in the stepped mode version of this which I, I took a look at um, in the stepped mode version of this there was kind of like this snappiness to the to the reaction backwards and I kept that in okay I did not polish this um, too much so that it, it kind of like fell apart um, that's sort of the first thing that I want to um, remind you and reiterate um, that has to do with workflow. You cannot lose that impression, that the strength of what you've made um, when you go into polish. Okay? You just cannot. And the way you make sure that you don't lose that is you, you take an approach where the the the, the blocked version is, it has to be so, is like at its, at its basis, its most essential, the, the strongest it possibly can be. And then once you go into polish, you have to, at every single moment that you've identified already, is like a strong moment or a strong choice or a very specific choice, you, you cannot move on until that, until once it's in splined, spline mode or splines, it is as strong as it was before, okay? So that's kind of like the first workflow change I think is going to be a little bit different for all of you. Because what I feel like I see is all of you, all of the um, curves go from step to spline, and then like you do like a pass where you try to get all of your moving holds to be as long as they were when it was in stepped mode, okay? So um, allow me to uh, demonstrate what I'm talking about. <clears throat> so uh, you know when you have stepped keys, and I've talked about a little this. Uh, I've talked about this a little bit um, before. Um, I want to use the paintbrush. Here we go. Okay, so you've got a key and you've got a key, right? And then basically this is the way that the animation goes when you have step keys, okay? Now, I've said this before, if you want this to be, this section to be a moving hold, okay? And then this section is uh, uh, basically movement. It goes from, from here um, down to here, okay? Once you spline this, Maya is going to just give you this, right? That's what it's going to give you. So, I always say, it's a good idea to go through your keys and do copied pairs even in stepped mode. Even though there's going to be no change in stepped mode, if you do a full body key, then when you spline it, you'll actually get that moving hold that you were looking for. Okay? And Maya, well actually Maya, unless you do plateau, Maya will, will kind of go a little bit uh, with some overshoot here. But at any rate, um, and, the, and, and I want to point out, the reason, and I'm not, I'm not trying to impress you when I say this, the reason I know that that's exactly what Maya is going to do is because I've paid attention to how Maya interpolates the keyframes that I've put down. So if I knew, ask yourself this, and I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to impress you, I'm not trying to blow your socks off by like, oh, look how cool I am, okay? It's not about that. I do all this for you. <clears throat> Think, ask yourself if you can, if you could have, before I just showed you, looked at those four keyframes. And if I said I, I clicked on spline, if you know exactly what would have happened. If I clicked on plateau, if you know exactly what would have happened. If you clicked on clamp, exactly what would happen, right? Because that's actually, that's actually part of being able to predict how your um, animation is going to change between stepped and spline. 
All right. So, but the point I'm driving at right now in terms of um, going from that moment, going from that strength to um, in, into spline, that really, sorry, that really super strong blocking into spline is that <clears throat> we all see something a little bit different um, in our step keys. And um, whenever I'm directing animation, I'm telling the animators that this is kind of what I'm seeing in the animation in its current state. And when you polish this or when you spline this out, I want you to sp pay very specific ten attention to getting this, 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 and this. Okay? And you, you can ask any of the uh, animators that I've worked with. You can ask the collaborators. That's how it goes. Okay? I'm always looking out for what I want them to preserve in the animation because splining it kind of destroys stuff, doesn't it? Okay. But the change I want you to make, the first kind of workflow change, is that instead of going through your animation and trying to refine and define those moving holds in a pass, is to actually take moment by moment to reestablish the, the strength that was in that motion, okay? So in stepped mode, we're seeing someone do a reaction like Whoa, like that, okay? And then you spline it and it turns into just like, just an evenly timed, really like soupy kind of thing. Then don't move on to the next turn and then the punch and then the reaction when he gets punched. Don't move on to those things um, until you get this thing, Whoa! like that, that snappy, like explosive reaction working in splines, okay? Working on that um, with the interpolation that Maya gives you and refining it and, def and, and, and changing it and tweaking it yourself, okay? Now, why am I saying this? Why am I saying this? It seems like, it's like almost, hey, you know, Kenny, that workflow is kind of working for me um, right now anyway. I don't see why I really have to have that much you know, you know that. I don't see why I have to go get that strength back until, you know, before I do anything else. Why would I have to do that? My workflow is working for me, Kenny. And to to you, I would say yes. Maybe your workflow is working for you, but ever since I started on this concept of animating with tempo, I've realized that our timing choices are so quickly adulterated and, and t like taken away from us by Maya, um, even like with the, the simplest thing, that we should actually be concerned with taking every opportunity we can to get them back as fast as possible. And if you are doing a pass where you're just defining moving holds, then what you're doing is you're saying, okay, all that unique uniqueness that was in the blocking is basically secondary to like how long he's standing still or you know, basically the length of these moving holds. And do you see why that is a problem? It's a problem because your, your workflow is biased towards just making sure that the transitions are long enough, not that you're preserving these like, Wah! you know, crazy, you know, interesting timing choices, okay? Because what I just did, like the reaction and the turn and then the, 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 the punch, and I, I, I tried to do it as interesting as possible with my body right now. Maybe that wasn't interesting, but it's a hell of a lot more interesting than you know, that soupy crap that you get um, and then that you'd have to fix then one by one by one uh, with just your moving holds the right length that they're supposed to be. It's like, oh goody, now my moving holds, you know, are, are the right length and the rest of the, the actual animation, the transitions and, and all the actions, you know, are these soupy, you know, kind of wishy-washy messes, messes, okay? So um, you'll notice that when I was talking about, when I was polishing 
starting this, starting to, to, to hunker down and get into the keys of this uh, animation in last month's lecture, that I really was trying to preserve and keep that, um, that interesting timing that I was seeing in the stepped keys and not really, as, as much as I could, not move on at all on anything else until I was sure <clears throat> that, that I had that moment kind of pegged, right? The first one was basically the hit of the bullet, like what that looks like, bing, like that hit into it, and I sort of like, it, it goes up and then it kind of like leans just a little bit full body, like to, to finish that out. Um, and only then did I work on sort of the anticipation before he, he, he slaps down, okay? Whereas before, and this was my workflow as well, I'm saying this from experience, making the change and seeing a little bit of, not a little bit, a lot of, of um, um, a lot of uh, more honoring of the choices that I've made in timing earlier on in the shot rather than polishing it into something actually fundamentally different. That's the bit, that's what I wanted to say. That's what I basically, this, this whole thing is, is about. For directors watching the animation and not even watching it getting done, just like watching just uh, 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 in progress changes as it goes along, if you're not seeing it every day, then sometimes you'll look at something and you'll say, this feels like a different shot. And it's, 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 it's very frustrating for the director and the artist to have to then try to understand and figure out how did this turn into a, di a different shot? Like what can we put back? A lot of times it's not something that you can just put back. This change, this one little change, I believe will actually help you put it back. It'll, it'll help you get where you need to get in terms of, um, in terms of the, um, uh, the essence of those choices that you've that you've made okay cool so uh, thank you for bearing with me on that long ramble that long rant in fact I need more water I spoke so long now <clears throat> um, but let's um, let's dive in first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my workflow checklist now this uh, simplified workflow checklist it's available um, on my site um, if you just go to the downloads area I believe um, there is, let me see, tutorial files and materials. Hmm. Okay, well, I'll make sure it's there. Um, if you just go to the downloads um, um, area, I'll, I'll make sure that it's there. Um, you'll notice that in the um, polish section, um, there are some things that are, uh, that are uh, listed here. And these are not, this is not, my, my workflow checklist, remember, is not what I'm doing. Okay, it's, it's really actually what I'm tr trying to um, be thinking about, okay? And so, really, this not, is not a checklist as much as it is, you know, like, you know, hey, hey, let me just, like, do these things and check them off. It's, I'm going into Polish, and I'm, I'm, using, my, I'm using my brain to switch gears. And this is how, and, and this helps me do that, okay? So, first thing is totally new mindset. Not a continuation of blocking plus. This means no more adding of breakdowns. They're already there. They just need to be adjusted. Okay? Right? Non-performance texture. So, okay, I got it. Non-performance texture. You can now add the little bit of dirt to the keys that you need. Things like non-performance breaths, etc. Okay, I got it. Um, arcs. Now, again, this is not like, okay, I, I'm going to do these things one at a time. Okay? It's a little bit like that, a tiny little bit like that in the beginning, but not, um, actually not really. This whole workflow checklist is really just mindset, okay? So, it's, so what I'm trying to say is I'm not going to add non-performance texture before I make sure that arcs are looking great, you know? I'm thinking about arcs and non-performance texture at the exact same time, okay? So that little bit of dirt in the keys, I need to make sure that it's working with my arcs, not against my arcs, okay? Weight check. All right, do a pass looking exactly where the center of gravity is. When do I do that? I can do that at any time in polish, okay? Because my non-performance texture and my arcs are not, are not more or less important than the weight check, okay? 
don't polish too early. That means ask yourself, are you ready to polish this thing? Okay, and then the final 5%, toast blaze, blinks, fix tiny things, et cetera, et cetera, you know, penetrations, um, uh, what have you, okay? So with this mindset, all right, so I have all these things in mind now. So now I, I've really prepared myself, and these, this is the, these are the things I'm thinking about. I'm going to jump into, uh, uh, jump into Maya and actually start uh, uh, touching this guy again. Let me close this, so I just make sure I have all the RAM that I need. All the RAM my little heart desires. <clears throat> okay, so let's watch it a few times. Um, now, uh, don't forget to uh, don't forget the one of the most um, powerful um, tools there is in animation is the list. Your list is. Um, most powerful when you make your list as you're watching your animation um, uh, for the first time after you haven't seen it for a long time. Oh, I haven't even opened this thing up for uh, for a few weeks, so this is a perfect time for me to uh, start uh, you know start up a list again. Okay, the the format I like to use is bracket and then a frame number and then a note. Okay, now if you can if you can watching it at speed is better than framing through because you're you're actually getting the same impression of the animation that your audience is going to. So it's, it's good to polish at speed, or sorry, to make this list at speed, um, even though when your director sees it, your director is going to frame through um, sometimes as well, and uh, you need to worry about that. Okay, so I would say that um, Around 14, the hands are too static. I really like the double wobble that I put on his head um, as it gets knocked back. Um, but the shoulders are also too static. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Oof. I normally get twos. Um, I don't like the direction that the heels are now spinning in. So I'm going to say um, 12 um, screen left heel is spinning wrong direction. Um, also, uh, hand pose change. Um, 25, the, um, what I do, how I'm, how I'm able to pick out the frame is I see where something is happening on screen and then the next time it plays through, I watch the animation peripherally as I'm looking at the timeline. And so I know that frame 25 is where the screen right arm is taking on weird silhouette and then when it lands on about 30 screen right hand is very stiff the pose the hips um, are not in a nice line with the line of action they're a little opposed to it. There's a little bit of twist. Um, 17, mouth can open more. Thirty-six, untwin movement of head and screen left arm. I think the head can lag just a little bit more on 30, so more overlap on um, head, tie in to contact, 
pose on the body. What I mean by that is I want to make sure that the head um, feels like it's overlapping but also is playing with the contact on the body because I'm a, I'm a huge contact stickler as well. The, and in that vein actually the, the body contact needs more um, impact in Y uh, three to four frames, okay? Forty one or so that screen left elbow is maxing and popping. Um, I think just by the end, so I'm just go end here by end. By the end, let's um, try the head finishing rotated away in uh, Y. Thirty-four drop screen right shoulder. Thirty-three, maybe one more bounce on the leg or screen left foot. And then 20, I'd just like to see a, a tiny bit more drift on body after bullet, I think. Okay. Cool. All right. So now I've made that list. Remember, you make your list, you make your, 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 your little notes for yourself when you haven't seen the animation for a long time. As long as you can wait to see the animation, that's how long you should uh, wait to do this list, okay? So if you only have, if you're going to lunch, and then you come back and you have to work on the animation again, you know, for, for a studio or whatever, then you should make a list when you come back from lunch because you haven't looked at it for an hour, you know? And that might be the most, <laughs> the longest amount of time that you have. Doesn't matter if you were right, here's the thing, People forget, it doesn't matter if you're right in the middle of working on something very intense while, um, like when you left for lunch and you, you come back and you, you want to uh, you know, want to just jump right back into what you were doing and whatever. No, 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 no. You just, you know, washed your eyes for an hour looking at different things, cars and people and food and, and you know, things far away and nearby and whatever. So you, you, you cleared your, your eyes a little bit. Make a list, and when you're done with that thing that you're really intensely working on, then you can get to the notes that are on the list. Um, I like to say that your list is your is your uh, as a gift to yourself. It's a gift that you're giving the future you, who in a couple hours is not going to be able to see anything wrong with the shot. Um, it's a gift. It's a gift to that person from somebody who can see a lot in the, that's wrong with the shot. And then when you get to that point where you can't see anything, it's all of a sudden like, oh, look at all these notes. I, didn't, I, can't, I can't even see these things, but I'm going to work on them because, you know, apparently they're in there, right? Um, uh, on top of showing your colleagues, on top of showing them, you know, your work. It's a team effort. You can't be afraid to show, show people uh, uh, what you're doing, okay? So this is what we're going to do. We're just going to go down. Normally, we start prioritizing the list, normally. But um, in Polish, it's kind of like everything is, is, uh, everything is the same. Everything is, is kind of as important, as important as everything else. So um, there's really no need to you, you know, kind of wait like that. Okay. So um, our first one was hands are too static. Okay. 
Um, so let's go ahead and start looking at that, frame 14. Okay, so it's right after this hit. Okay, I, I, I kind of like what's going on in this one, but I'm, going to, I'm just going to remind myself what the keys are doing. Okay, so we have this kind of like moving hold until 18, and then they're very static. Okay, I see that. So I'm going to have this one start to rotate out just a little bit more, and then as it starts coming forward, it finishes the rotation. So the arm is going ba back and forth, but the hand is kind of like doing this rotation the, this, this whole time. You see that? And this is polish, so I can put a little bit, you know, a little bit of overlap on that. Maybe even a little bit more. Okay. I also said that I wanted um, a hand pose change, but I want to point out that I'm not going to do that quite yet. I'm going to do that when I get to that note. Okay. It, I find it. Maybe you're different, but I find it a little bit. See, hand pose change. I find it a little bit hard to work on one thing and then change, switch gears and uh, work on another thing without losing my place, okay? So I'm going to look at this other hand as well because they were both too static, okay? I think this is probably actually the wrong pose for this hand. Where's the elbow? Where's the pull vector? Here. Does this guy have pull vectors? Why can't I see his pull vectors? Or are they just using twist? Oh, arm twist. Okay. That's fine. So I'm going to bring this back a little bit. Okay. So, sort of the same thing here. I'm just going to. I'm just going to overlap this just a little bit. by twisting out too much. I'm going to look through camera, make sure I'm not losing everything that I'm doing in, in foreshortening right now. Yeah, see I am. The, uh, the rotation is kind of opposite to the direction that I wanted to go. I'm going to delete the rotation key on this frame, this arm. Yeah, it, it kind of moves a little bit nicer. Okay. Excellent. It might be moving a little bit too quickly into this position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a key on translates and also delete the, this key so it just slows down a little bit. Okay, awesome. That looks a lot better. Okay, cool. So I'm not going to delete this. Another um, little tip is that if you um, hit a note, you don't want to necessarily delete 
the note because then you don't have really any record that you saw it and that you worked on it. So this is part of kind of like journaling our workflow. Um, keep all of your lists of notes. Um, if you have access to a printer, um, normally you don't at a studio. Um, you can't print anything, but um, that's why this is good. Look what I have here. What is this lo-fi, low-tech thing right here? Oh, it's just a little yellow notepad. Perfect size for making a list of notes. Okay, and you know, there's about 20 pages ripped out of this thing. So this has gotten some good use already. Um, believe it or not, I actually prefer to write down my notes, even though it takes a lot longer. Um, I prefer to write down my notes because then at the end of the day, I just have a, a checked off uh, note and um, if I, and I bring it to dailies. So then, so I'm sitting there and I'm taking notes at dailies as well, but then when the director says, okay, what's going on here? And starts framing back and forth, ah, it looks like there's like a knee pop. And then I can, I can go and I say, hold on, let me see. Frame 35 knee pop, huh, okay, great. I, uh, I, I need to go back and, and, and work on that um, again. See, how helpful would it be to, to always have that nearby? So it's really helpful. Okay, so I'm not going to delete the note. I'm just going to check it off um, on my screen. And the way to do that is I just like to put a little asterisk um, at the end, like that. Or is it asterisk? Is it asterisk or asterisk? I don't know why I feel like it has a it has a uh, an S at the end. <clears throat> anyway, um, 15 shoulders too static. Okay, let's do that. Okay, I'd love to see what it looks like if I just, um, as he goes back, um, kind of like these shoulders kind of like roll, you know, back and then forward. So I'm actually going to do something um, a little bit experimental. I'm going to rotate them both. Cool. Although, I think they might op rotate opposite. Oh, okay, great. Let me see here. Oh, awesome. Oh, this is exactly what I wanted. Okay. So I'm going to have them... I'm going to key this almost straight ahead, like this, and have them drop, and then kind of roll forward. Oh, it's really cool. I can already tell it's really cool. So let's watch that in panel. All right, it can be smoother, though. Let's work on making that smoother. Back. All right, so the problem is on this pose, this one is too far down. This one is probably good, but then this one is too far up. So it needs to drop, and so does this one. Oh, just a little bit. And this hand is looking a little static again. Oh, that's really cool what's going on there. I uh, just don't want that this shoulder to ri rise again right here. Um, while you're working, see how I'm, I'm touching, you know, the controls in, in camera, um, they can be very distracting because we really look at silhouette, we look holistically at a shot, and um, it can be very distracting, okay? So, um, always, you know, if you're working, always just check it once really quickly with the, uh, with the controls turned off. To see what you're getting, kind of in your in your just in your body, without the controls, kind of like telegraphing what's going on. OK. 
okay I'm very happy with that very happy okay cool shoulders to static done screen left heel spinning in wrong direction oh okay yeah so I'm just gonna try a little bit of a different pose it looks like there's no keys on this until 26 so I can delete this and I can just set the new pose so instead of him instead of him rotating it out that way let's rotate it out this way instead and the leg twist toe pivot twist what is that oh geez I don't want that I want none of that okay set Don't be afraid to slide your feet either. Okay. I'm going to continue it sliding just a little bit, like six frames. I think it can take two more frames. I think it can. So I'm going to hit set key and d delete this one on frame 12. Yeah. Two more frames feels better. Now we are not done there. Let's try three more frames. Nope, too slow. See, I was right. Two more, two more frames is right. Experimenting. How, quick, how long did it take me to just do that little experiment? Right? How long did that take? I'm constantly trying to remind you guys to experiment, experiment, experiment. Even at this stage in a shot to try something out. I made a quick decision, two frames. I tried three, it took one second to, to see if it was any better. And if it was better, I would have kept it. And guess what, it took one second to get better animation. Isn't that a pretty good return on time? I think so, okay? So experiment, 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 try it. Don't think about it like, oh, that probably won't look good. No, just do it and then when it doesn't look good, then you were right, okay? Okay, good. Glad we're working together on this. All right. So I like that new I like that new heel direction as it spins outwards. Um, I can probably do the same thing with this one. Let me see though. It's using some. It's using this channel. Okay, let's just try this. Let's try let's try four frames on this one. Let's delete this. So that it kind of comes back a little bit, a little bit of movement on there. Yeah, I like that new overshoot. I didn't, I didn't, uh, didn't specifically like look at it and think that it needed it, but um, but I think it's looking pretty good. I think it's looking pretty, pretty, pretty good. Okay. All right. So. Um, let's move on to the next one. Screen have Leo. All right, hand pose change 15. Okay, so now I get to go back in and do um, little hand pose changes. And I think it should probably go just pretty like almost like slack. So I'm just going to um, um, grab the the base mid and tip of all of these and just do a little bit. of it opening up a little bit more. The the lower fingers seem like they have a little bit less on them than the rest, that's fine. I'm zeroing them because there's a little bit of kind of like customized um, posing on these right now. I just just want to get it kind of like defaulted, not totally default, but just like opened. And now they're spread too much. I 
I can bring them in though just a little bit. And now I like a little bit of cup. Just a little bit. Oh, there's no ring cup? Hmm. Weird. Okay. Yeah, I'm not I don't want the, the what I don't want to start seeing is like this weird like clenched fist um, or too big of a pose because then it'll be like it'll it'll be distracting. I feel like if the if the hand is like really splayed out, it'll be almost like you know brain short circuiting. And this is you know this is a death cycle, but I don't I don't really feel like it's that violent. And if it's clenching, then it'll be too alive. Right, so it, like the slack is for me is a little bit better than than those other two choices. Um, what I'm seeing right here, this looks fine in in panel. You see that? Um, actually, it looks a little bit IK. But I was going to point out is it looks a little bit IK in that this hand kind of like hits this keyframe right here, and then the body almost like catches up to it. You see how that elbow is bending, and nothing is really happening in the in the hand right here. So I'm just going to just take a few frames, maybe three frames right here, just to continue this down and back just a little bit. All right, now see, look, this is the wrong frame to stop on. You see how it's totally frozen right there? There must be a keyframe on frame 22 and not frame 21, on maybe the, on the shoulders maybe. Yeah, see, look at that. Check that out. How did I know that? How did I know that there was going to be a keyframe on frame 22? Because I had a key on frame 21, and it was obviously the shoulder movement that was making, you know, the shoulders going in this round direction, this, this round path, rather. Um, so with, with that motion kind of determining what that elbow is doing, when I see just a little bit of gain, a little bit of like weird play between the hand and the elbow on frame 21, I know that, that that's where the, the problem is being generated. So voila, frame 22 is the one that I actually need to have it um, continue out on. And it can go even further. It really should go further. And really, this should be on an arc as well. It should continue on that arc. see that see that little fix all right cool so I'm very happy with that new slack slack hand pose um, let's do this one let's do this guy okay so here's one kind of cool thing. If I, if I copy this keyframe, um, because everything is the same kind of hierarchy, it should be able to paste. Yeah. Sweet. Neat, right? OK. So Actually, you know what? I'm just going to default everything. What happened? Oh. Okay. And just bring back, bring back a little bit of what I want. Not, not deal with what they have. I say they, like I don't know who animated this. <laughs> they, who animated this? What were they thinking? No, this is good stuff. I shouldn't say they. Oops, I meant to do mid, not tip. There we go. Now that's that's a little too customized, I think. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna do this. I'm going to copy this. I'm gonna go mid base and tip. I'm just gonna have it um, squeeze close just a tiny tiny bit on this. And I'm going to, on this frame, 
kind of have it spread open just a little bit, just a teeny tiny bit. It's almost overshoot on the fingers, just like that. Okay. That looks kind of cool. Watching it here. Okay, now don't forget, watch it with the uh, NURBS um, controllers turned off. Let me save my file real quick. And uh, we'll watch it with the uh, controls hidden to get a uh, good impression of it. Okay. Cool. This arm looking a little bit static. It looks like it's coming down and hitting just a little bit of a wall. I really like the continuation that's happening in this one. So let me see if I can, in, in the, um, through camera, try to continue this just a little bit. Cool. All right, that did it. Hand pose chain, done. Screen right arm is taking on a weird silhouette, 25. Oh, you know, it was actually 27, 28. I think it's, I think it was this. <laughs> Let me just set a, uh, a key right here. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, this needs to be fixed. Is that the one next, next one? 30, screen right hand, very stiff. Okay, yeah, so that was that one. And now that takes me right into this one. So it's actually not 30, it was 29. It feels like the arm is already kind of like pressed because we have these really harsh angles through here. So what I'm looking for, this is kind of a, uh, a workflow moment. What I'm looking for is um, just to make sure that when you have your, um, like your big speed thing that's like contrasted against maybe your slow speed. Right before this, we have almost like a static pose where he's just like wiggling just a little bit through his body and that's very static, right? So right after that, we have this quick motion. You gotta kind of make sure that you don't try to contrast too much at once. So we're contrasting speed. We try to contrast pose too much. It's just too visually confusing. So um, so I'm going to try to bring the pose back into something that is a little bit more, I mean, if we look at the screen left arm, we kind of get the, the right idea. I'm going to bring it back to something that's just a little bit more like the, like the smooth curved silhouette that the arm had before and not so, you know, kind of like triple angled um, that we have right here with that, with that hand at a 90 elbow at a 90 and kind of the, the shoulder at a 90 almost as well. Um, in fact, if we continue the silhouette, um, um, check this out. Um, uh, if we continue, continue the silhouette, we have this, we have this, and then it goes up to the head and we actually, the head is at almost at a 90 as well. So we have this, we have this smooth and, and it's nice to have opposites, right? It's nice to have smooth and then, you know, kind of like some angles, but I feel like we're getting that. We're getting the simple and then the complex down here. Um, this is just way too much, especially like across um, such a fast motion, right? So I'm just gonna kind of continue this posing just a little bit more. In fact, his hand can be up but I would rather it be up and out just a little bit like this. And for his hand to not hit near his face, but to, oh, yikes. I'm gonna have to go in here and figure out what's going on. I gotta zero all this stuff before I get in trouble with it. There we go. Okay, 
And what's happening with this shoulder? The shoulder freaking out. Okay. Just trying to figure out where this motion, where this pinching is coming from. Okay, basically coming from this twist that's happening in, in his body, which I do want in. So that's not going to, I can't take that out. Let me just drop this and rotate this um, a little bit to camera. Like that. I need to see what I'm doing. Trying to build a little bit of a hand pose that works a little bit better with this. Okay. All right. So I'm not going to work on. The rest of this, I'm just going to, I'm just going to delete it um, because what I want to be absolutely sure of is that anything that I was noticing past this that's going to affect how the arm moves is in there before that. So I'm just going to say, okay, so I, I got rid of that, that kind of like weird um, pose in the middle of the air, that stiff arm, and now it's, it's impacting where and how I want it to, this arm, but I can... Um, I can worry about the torso. I do know that there's a note coming up that deals with the, the body kind of bouncing and why. So that's going to affect that. So I'm just going to leave this till now. Um, it's important to know how your, um, how your um, uh, uh, body is going to move. I said hips are not quite in line with the action. Yeah, so if you look at the rotation of the spine right here and then the rotation of the hips, um, it really feels like you, we can get a, it just working together a little bit more. So on this frame, when he gets hit, I like that better than that. You see that? It's a very subtle change. I like it better. So I'm going to just copy it and delete this middle key. Cool. That was an easy one. Hips in the line of the action. Mouth can open more. This will be an easy one too. Yeah, so I'm seeing his top gum, gums. I thought, hey, what, what about if we um, open his mouth? And I said 17. Let's do 18 because there's already a key there. Let's not close it. Let's only close it a little bit. I know it's pretty much closed on 26. I know it's open as much as I want on 18. So let's go to frame 20, middle mouse drag to 26. Hit S to set a key and get that split difference. Let's bring it back just a little bit. Okay, cool. That was another quick one. Awesome. Okay, um, untwin movement of head and screen left arm. What's that? Oh, on this bounce. 
Um, let's look at that. Let's look at that. Hmm. Okay, so I think that probably the best approach would be to, um, I'm going to do a little bit of a weird thing. I'm going to make sure that the body contact needs more impact and why. Okay, so I think that this, this, uh, this needs to be moved. Body contact, I need to do this one right now because, and this one. Um, because the overlap on the head, the body contact, and all that is going to affect the movement of the head and the screen left arm on 36. So let's do that first. Body contact needs more impact in, not in, in pacey, impact in Y three to four frames on frame 30. Okay, boom, here's frame 30. Um, yeah, so if I can get away with just using the hips, mm, probably not. All right, so we just need to have it It's really this pose, isn't it? This really needs to be up off the ground. I need to kind of go back and rebuild what I have with the rest of the the rest of the body. And I know that that was like super, super rough, but um, I'm trying to just see if I can get the body to feel like it's balancing in Y first. Looking good so far. I'm going one frame before the end here. One frame before this end end controller, so that they're kind of working together. And it doesn't matter that it's intersecting down here; you can't see it, and the the we don't have any sort of like you know volume or squishers on on the body, so you know we kind of have to just go with what we have. Okay, so now we have sort of this a little bit more wiggly um, impression going on. This might be up in the air too long though. And then this is too much rotation upwards. Okay, let's watch that in panel. Okay, now I'm just going to look really quickly at the arc here in Y. And just going to do some just blunt smoothing. Kind of like you don't even know what you're looking at. I'm going to break this off of time so I can just make a parabola. I'm going to break these tangents. So we have a hard impact. Same thing here. Yeah, see now we have, it feels like an actual bounce on the body. Okay. And still preserving our cool timing that we've done, right? Our, our pretty cool timing that's going on in this body. It's looking great. 
So uh, we haven't lost any of that, and that's one of the main, main goals of, of polish, okay? So we have that body contact, more overlap on head, okay? So let's, tr let's see what, that, what that's all about. Gosh, it's kind of hard to get the more overlap on the head, isn't it? So let's, let's, let's just see if this is our last overlap frame, what happens. Have this thing slam into the ground. We'll fix the eye line, don't worry. I don't know, I mean, it's, I mean, holistically it doesn't feel too different, but frame by frame it definitely has more impact. I'm gonna keep it, you know, I, I don't know, I mean, holistically maybe it's because I'm not watching Play Blast, I'm just watching it in, in panel, but um, holistically I'm not getting that much stronger an impression, but it, it definitely, I mean, technically it, it really is a, a bigger impact, isn't it? Okay, let's move on. Onto a movement of head, okay, and here's the one that we're, we were waiting for. Here it is. Um, untwin movement of head and screen left arm. Head and screen left arm. Okay, so apparently I feel like they are moving too much together. That was just a little experiment that did not go well. I'm just gonna leave it how it was. But my main problem was when I was working on this, I was trying to make it feel like it was ranging the elbow by sliding as his body moved up and down. That, that concept's not really working right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to move it just a little bit behind him and then it won't be so affected by that range because the elbow the elbow won't be won't be so apparent because this elbow is facing us. That it, a little bit of force shortening will help it, and um, it, it it's not actually maxed out, right? So um, that's what I'm going to do. Let's see here. Okay. Delete all the hand poses on that. We'll fix them in a sec. So I said I want this just a little bit further behind. And I'm going to hide that, that elbow just a little bit. Also, this gives a little bit more of an impression that he's, he's, he's been shot in the head because you 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 put your arms out to to brace your fall when you um, are alive and you don't want to hit your face, right? But let me hide this elbow just a little bit more. Um, if you don't do that, right, then there's obviously something seriously wrong with you. Okay. Delete those. And now I can just kind of like just extend and kind of just kind of just lay down.
to that. Okay, so it's definitely not twinned anymore. So, but I'm going to put a little bit of a little bit of disconnection. The shoulder kind of can be used to break apart that arm from that neck, right? So let's do that. Even just untwinning, you know, even just breaking it off the same keys just a little bit has a big impact here. See that? See now how it feels like the, you know, there's at least, you know, some bones that are connected and, and they are connected, but it's not the exact same, you know, motion going through the arm as going through the head. Let's watch it with the uh, controls turned off. Cool. You know, it's funny, I thought I was going to have to do the same thing to the other arm, but I almost like how it hits and, and sort of stops. So now's a good time where I can go back to this arm and I'm going to have it land a little more towards his body. And it looks like I have to kind of frame by frame this. Nope, oh, we've lost range here. Maybe I didn't have to frame by frame it. Maybe it was just the shoulder. Yeah. Okay, so it seems like it's kind of weird that the shoulder kind of works against the um, hand like at all times. Anyway, so what I want to do is I just want this arm to, this arm to kind of do the impact and then come back. Like this. Let's just see what that looks like. It's just an experiment. I like it. I like how it comes down and it's almost as if, you know, the hand, this hand, just because it has so much like downward force, like the hand just like sticks. Um, it can slide a little bit though. Let's make it slide just a little bit. And I, I really can't tell you for the life of me why this rig is doing this with the um, with the ranging on this on this hand. This is definitely the kind of thing where you have to go frame by frame, submitting it for a final on a film.
sliding just a little bit, which is good. And like, do you like how that, that elbow, this is a little trick we used to use on Kong, which is when we do it with knees, like when the knees hit, or sorry, when the leg hit, like the knees would shake. So this is showing a lot of downward force by the fact that the elbow rotates forward and back. Bam, it's a lot of downward force because of that rotation. Bam. Cool, right? Very cool. So, screen left elbow, maxing popping, that's been taken care of already. Um, by the end, try to finish the rotation, head rotated away and why. I'm not sure if I agree with that anymore. Yeah, I don't agree with that anymore. I don't like that one. Drop screen right shoulder. Oh, no, see, we already took care of that because we already made the arm. We already animated that arm away. Okay. Maybe one more bounce on the screen left foot. Let's do that one. Here we go. Wham. Yeah, see, it's just it's a little lazy back here. Um, it kind of hits. I can animate this straight ahead, I'm pretty sure. See that looks like. It's too too big. I like the timing, it's just too big. Let's just tone it down a little bit. Alright, let's go into the graph editor, check out that translate Y. Yeah, it's just too big. What do I do now? Let's just, just break these. You can you can go almost. It's fine. You can go almost just arbitrary with your um, with your tangents um, in Y when you know that there's an impact. You can almost just do it blindly. See, I'm I'm just like kind of just putting. Like, it almost seems random into this uh, into these Y arcs. It's not random, I assure you. It's very meticulous. All right, so now we've got some cool, cool stuff going. Let's uh, save this. Get uh, and take a look at it with this new size here. Cool, looking very cool. Looking very, very cool. Okay, maybe more balance on the screen left foot. I just did a tiny bit more drift in the body after bullet. All right, so this seems like one that I um, should have done first. <laughs> Let's see. I'm just doing an experiment here. I'm going to set a key on 12 and 12. 23 and just make this one just a further a little bit further back and just see what happens 
You know, if it's, it's a little better, but you know what, if it's too much, it loses that real nice kind of like snap to it. So I think I, I'm gonna keep that in, but I'm gonna tone it down a little bit. I'm gonna tone it down by uh, splitting the difference. All right, so let's do like 75% as much. So that'd be like frame 20, hit S on frame, middle mouse drag and hit S on 23. Yeah, that's much better. It was too big before. We lost kind of that awesome snap into that, that pose. Okay. All right. Awesome. Check that out. Just went through all of our, num uh, our lists. Okay. All these things. Now, if this was, you know, production, I'd print this out or, um, you know, just save this, save this where I can uh, find it later. Okay. Um, don't get rid of it. Really love how his head um, has that movement that really takes his body back. That was something that was in the um, in the blocking, even that 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 was really strong, and I, and I think was very successful. All right, so now this is the point where that final five percent is is necessary. Now it would take me another. Um, the way that uh, animation works, you know that like as you get closer and closer and closer, it takes more and more time to get it right. So it would take me another, what was that? About an hour and 20 minutes. It would take me another maybe three or four hours to get the final 5% on everything. But I am going to do final 5% on just um, the, uh, let's say, screen left hand. Okay? So let's just do the final 5 on 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 just that hand. Okay? Um, and, and namely, it's where this impact happens, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through and I'm just going to make some really nice contact as he falls down on the ground. And, and massage this as well. Okay. What I'm going for here is kind of like a nice flat hand pose on the ground. We probably have to bring this down just a little bit. Just like that, right? Just like that, and then just kind of have everything working together. What the heck happened? Is there no pinky tip? Oh, that's interesting. Weird. Okay, that's a nice contact. Set a key. Now these these hands would be the fingers rather would be coming up off the ground. Um, what am I doing?
Okay, and we can probably default these. Probably, let's see, I don't know. Just guessing. In fact, sometimes it's good to just default them because in a section like this that's really, really tight, most likely you're going to go, and go frame by frame. So if you're going to build every single pose frame by frame, then, uh, then you might as well, right? Bring this in just a little bit. And I feel like I can just you know, bend these down a little bit. Okay. Got to get a little bit of help from that hand, though. Um, this one's a little bit different. Why? Because this isn't the moment of impact where it hits, right? In fact, this should be probably a little further back. Let me adjust that in, in uh, the camera view, though. Okay. because this is an impact, so the hand is going to slap and the fingers are going to be really kind of like roughly treated. Now on this second impact, basically, the difference is the hand is not coming down as hard, okay? Right? So the contact is not going to be as flat, like there's like a, a weight on the top of the hand flattening those fingers. See what I mean? So this is going to be a lot. It's going to be a lot gentler. So as it slides across here, I'm actually going to drag the fingers a little bit. Pretty cool, right? And by here, obviously, you're not supposed to be in the ground. Let's get them back out. Like that. Just going frame by frame, just making sure it's just touching. Okay. 
and now it should be basically lying flat. Just going through. This is the job. This is what you all signed up for. And maybe a tiny little bit of uh, spread the other way. So that they're coming back just a little bit. See what I just did there? It's like a little bit of drag on the ground. See that? Okay, so that would take a little bit more polish as well on top of what I already did, but uh, let's watch it. Awesome. All right, cool. Well, that was a lot of fun. Um, on top of all of the um, edits that I just started, um, there is um, what I'd like to uh, kind of uh, recommend is, is, is just start at the top of the head and look at every single controller and just look at how it's, uh, how it's moving and see if there's something that you can do, something you can add on top of it. Um, when you get to a certain point, it's, it's almost just like you just take a, a almost top-down approach to, to polishing that final 5%. So you start at the top of the head. Do they have any antennas? Um, you know, then just a, like a little bit of, you know, that tiny little uh, polish to that secondary that's on top of there. Um, do they have like anything attached to their head, anything that can have secondary? Then you go down into the face. The face is a whole can of worms, of course. Um, then, then down here, you know, just like all these tiny little things that um, if there's contact, if there's penetration, if there's a little bit of, you know, way that you can add some texture, a little bit of dirt to the keys, um, smooth the arcs, whatever, all that stuff um, goes in the final 5%. Um, we used to have a, uh, a big issue trying to get the final 5% on um, Shots and Kong almost because, uh, mostly because there was, uh, it's so much physical movement that um, any note to the, to the physical mu movement, the, 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 the really physical acting, not acting, performance that was, that was on screen, um, obviously had huge impact on things like, you know, like when the foot goes down, that toe splay that happens, you know, that, even that kind of thing. So um, it was really tough to get the final five into all of our shots there, but we, we ended up, we did it, we did okay. Um, so hopefully, as you saw me working and uh, describing what, what decisions I was making and when, um, you got a little bit more of an insight into a, a good polish workflow. I really enjoyed this uh, shot. I will put this shot, um, um, I, think I, I think I asked the animator if I can put it online. I'll double check again to make sure that I can before I put it online, but I'm probably going to be able to uh, uh, download this shot and do, do a little bit more polish yourself. And, um, um, hope you learn a lot from that. Okay, um, you can re, uh, you can request uh, more resources, lectures, and and whatnot, webcasts in the future that you'd like to see on KennyWare.com by going to the resource wish list in the forum. I check that um, every once in a while when I'm uh, looking for ideas on what to do here. Um, it's a great way to uh, drive the content on the site. Of course, the Ask Video Mail is the main. Uh, way to drive content on the site. It's uh, weekly videos based on your questions 
and um, I really appreciate you sending in more of those. Um, this was a great time, though. I hope you learned a lot. Good luck with your animation. And as always, welcome.